For decades now, the Range Rover has held its own in the supersize SUV segment. It's long been the default choice for those after the luxury of a limousine with the practicality and status of a 4x4. But BMW thinks its days are numbered, and in an attempt to fill every conceivable niche across every available market, the German giants have launched this, the all-new BMW X7. With the introduction of the X7, BMW now occupies a broader range of SUVs than near enough any maker on the planet. So depending on your lifestyle choices and your needs, you can choose anything from the very smallest X1 through to the X3 or X5 with the X2, X4 and X6 sitting somewhere in between. But with this new X7, BMW is entering uncharted territory. Due for arrival in the UK next month, BMW will offer its Mercedes GLS rival with a choice of three six-cylinder engines, each with an eight-speed automatic gearbox. The entry-level 30D costs from £72,155 and uses the now familiar 261 horsepower 3-litre diesel unit. For an additional £2,000, buyers can select the 40i petrol, while just over 87 k will buy you the flagship M50D, with not one, but four turbochargers. It's that 40i model that we've got here for the very first time. It gets 335 brake horsepower and 450 newton meters of torque, which means despite the fact that it's 5.1 meters long and 1.8 meters tall, it will accelerate from 0 to 62 miles an hour in 6.1 seconds. Yet BMW claims it will do nearly 30 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle. BMW claims the X7 is a paragon of quality, delivering outstanding luxury and a full complement of advanced equipment features. As such, every version gets LED headlights, air suspension, and a 12.3-inch digital dash. Its sheer size means even the entry-level car gets 21-inch wheels, while the three-part glass roof floods the cabin with natural light. While it won't waft like a Range Rover even on 22-inch wheels, those air springs mean that the ride is really quite calm and composed. Now, the roads out here are pretty good and the highways are completely smooth, but even when you direct it at harder and deeper potholes, the car never seems to become too flustered and retains its composure even over the really worst lumps and bumps. Like the new X5, which we tested last year, the X7 comes with a whole host of semi-autonomous driving functions making it a very relaxing car to drive on the motorway. We took it from the factory in South Carolina all the way to Savannah, Georgia, some 300 odd miles, and it sat effortlessly at the national speed limit. It isn't phased by speeding trucks or aggressive crosswinds either. While our route hasn't been the most involving, it's clear that the X7 drives like any other BMW SUV. That is to say, yeah, it's relatively involving, but not the last word in driver dynamics. The steering is light and doesn't offer all that much feel, but the engine's responsive, the gearbox is excellent, and as we said before, it rides really nicely. There is no avoiding how big this car is though, and it does tend to roll around and wallop in the corners in a way that you might not expect from something like a Porsche Cayenne or even the smaller X5. But that is not what this car is about. This car is about getting from A to B as relaxed and comfortably and effortlessly as possible, and in that regard, the X7 absolutely excels. As you would expect for more than £70,000, the standard kit list is generous. In addition to those LED lights and 21-inch wheels, every car gets the latest iDrive operating system and a 10-speaker stereo. M Sport models get all the usual trim additions, while BMW individual options span everything from bespoke paint to full merino leather. So we spent plenty of time talking about what it's like up here, but BMW wants it to be as comfortable up here as it is back there. So why don't we go and check out what it's like in the rear? As you'd expect for a car this big, there is loads of space to stretch out in the back. Now, all UK cars will get a rear bench seat, which means three seats across the rear and two in the back. But for about 500 quid more, you can upgrade to this six seat kind of armchair style lounging seats in the back. Now, everything reclines electrically as you'd expect, forwards, backwards, the rear up and down, and you can even spec some blinds for the doors and you can control the three-piece panoramic roof from the back chair. But this is a seven-seat car, so if we pull this forward, it electrically operates up to the top and yeah, space in the back is pretty generous. Now I'm six foot and a tiny little bit and yeah, my head is rubbing a little bit on the ceiling, but 
In all honesty, you're not going to get much better than back here, even in a Land Rover Discovery. Four zone climate control is standard, but you can even option five zone climate control, which you can operate from the buttons up here. But the biggest difference in the X7 versus something like the XC90 or the Discovery is boot space. Even with the rearmost seats in place, the X7 boasts a boot bigger than you'll find in the latest Mazda 3. Fold everything down and you'll reveal a van like 2,120 litres, while that air suspension system we mentioned earlier means you can lower the car to make loading that little bit easier. It's a colossal car, but the benefits inside are clear as day. The first ever BMW X7 shouldn't worry Range Rover's marketing guys all that much, but that doesn't stop this being a seriously accomplished luxury SUV. It's huge both inside and out, which means it excels at being a family bus and an executive limo at the same time. I think we'll see plenty of these on UK roads in the not too distant future. Click the video windows to see our first drive of the new BMW X5, or for a walk around of the latest luxury SUV king, the full fat Range Rover. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and press the Auto Express logo to subscribe to our channel.